Welcome to Kirsty Cast, the show where we hope to illuminate, entertain, and engage our listeners, helping them create the life they want. I'm your host, Kirsty Manna. Hey, everybody, welcome to Kirsty Cast. I'm Kirsty Manna, your host for this podcast. It's really exciting. This is episode 20. And wow, we have been doing this for a lot of weeks. So thanks so much for listening and liking and downloading the podcast. And I hope you're watching it too on YouTube at my Songwriter Girl One channel, which is what I'm shooting this podcast for today as a video. Well, I am here with Bill Warner and he is the man behind the scenes. He's setting up all the lights and running the sound and setting up the mics and all that good stuff. And Bill and I have been married for a really long time. We were just talking about it. We can't even remember how long we've been married. I don't know. It's something like three years. No, it's longer than that. It's like 38 years, I think. Isn't it, Bill? Is that in cat years? or? I think that's in cat years. It's in cat years. Wow. If that was in cat years, we'd be married a really, really long time. Well, anyway, speaking of cats, my guest today on the Shiro Spotlight is somebody who knows a lot about animals and she is a person who had a really cool mission in mind and grew it into a really well-respected organization here in Nashville. So I thought since she was on the show today, I would talk a little bit about the theme of giving back. You know, we sometimes think uh, when we have blessings in our life, we think, how did we get some of those blessings? And I really believe that some of them come to us from when we gave something back. And you might be giving back all the time and you don't even realize it. You know, giving back doesn't necessarily have to be about giving a donation of money. It can be about maybe fixing somebody's flat tire, giving them a ride home uh, when their car breaks down. And there's two car items. That's happened to me where somebody has helped me do that. (laughs) They've taken me home when I have car trouble. Maybe it's something like smiling at somebody. It could be paying somebody a compliment. There's all kinds of little things you can do to give back to other people. Now, Nashville is a really great town in regards to giving back. And Nashville is just past uh, the six month anniversary of a really deadly tornado, tornadoes that went through here back in the spring. And Nashville just always jumps into action as soon as people need help. It's really a unique place, I think, in that way. I've I've never seen anything like it. The volunteer state. The volunteer state, right. So that's really that's a really cool thing about Nashville. And if you come to visit here, you'll notice how people are really generous. And so that's that teaches us all a lot. Yeah, you know, living in a place like this is cool. But I wanted to pose this question. Do you think Bill, it's harder to give back when the world is scary. The way the world is now, it's a little scary. Things are uncertain, you know, with the pandemic and all kinds of things that are going on in our country. Do you think it's harder to give back when it's scary? What do you think? Well, there's more going on. So, I mean, the part of you that makes it would make you reluctant to intercede in a situation. Yeah, maybe so. Maybe that's the case. See, I think it's not as hard to give back when it's scary because I think everybody kind of feels like they're in the same boat. You know, we're all kind of in the same place. And so we want to see people uh, have better things happen for them in life. And so I think, I don't know, I think maybe it's a little bit easier. The sense of need is greater. Yeah, yeah. And I think we have to remember that everybody's feeling exactly the way we're feeling. Maybe they're feeling depressed. Maybe they're feeling stressed. They're feeling uncertain. And so I think when we give back, that makes us feel better about what's going on. It, you know, it just makes us feel like, hey, I'm helping out my neighbor. You know, we're all in the same boat. And I think that feels pretty good. So, you know, your words that and words that you say to people, they can help how you react to influence those around you, you know, just by the, the, the kind of things that you say. That's another way of giving back. And as I said in my podcast last week, you know, when, like when life gets messy, you have to feel like 
you know, things are going to get better. They're not going to stay. This too will pass. And you will always come out of it a little bit stronger. I hope a lot stronger. I remember my mom used to say, uh, it was a song that was in an old movie years ago. You know, if you worry, if you worry, if you bother your head, it won't help you, it won't help you, it'll hurt you instead. And I think that's really true. So if you feel like you're worrying, you know, maybe go talk about that to somebody else and then you can share what you have in common in regards to what you're worried about. There's somebody right now who's speaking to us who's worried. That's our cat, Chili. Now here's what she's worried about. She's worried about getting lunch. Now, what cat gets lunch? Our cats get lunch. They get lunch all the time. They get lunch five times a day, I swear. So there are actual statistics that tell us, not about cats getting lunch, but that giving back can really improve your health. It can improve your general health, just like an exercise habit can improve your health. And you know, it's because it's a positive habit. And so I think people uh, who give back, who help their friends or neighbors, you know, or there are sometimes emotional support to their partners, they've had a lower case of dying. Like they, they live five years longer just by giving back. So that's a really good reason to give back is that you can live longer. And when you give, you get back. Just do the grateful thing for about a week. Do the grateful test. And you'll see when you uh, share gratitude with people, when you show gratitude to others, you're going to start getting a lot of things back because it's a, that's the most simple form of generosity that you can ever portray is thanking somebody for something. And you know how it is when you get thanked. It's really a beautiful gift. It really makes you feel good. Also, giving back, it promotes trust between people. And heaven knows we all need a little more trust in the world. It's really good social interaction. It's good mental and physical, uh, you know, health. It really helps you in that department. And it helps you perceive other people in a more positive way when you give back. Again, you know, with the gratitude thing. So I hope you're gonna become a joyful giver and you're going to be giving back all over the place, everywhere in your life. And we're gonna be right back with a Shiro Spotlight. Don't go away. Stay tuned for the Shiro Spotlight. Hi everyone and welcome back to the Shiro Spotlight and I'm really excited today to have this person uh, uh, as a guest. She's, she's so multi-talented and you're going to hear more about that. And I met her uh, through my love of cats and let me tell you a little bit about her. She moved here from Denver, Colorado to Nashville about maybe more than 20 years ago and she came to pursue a career in music like so many people. And then she adopted this chow mix named Sophie from a shelter, and she says her life was quickly changed. She began to attend animal welfare conferences and volunteer for shelters, and she began a career in animal care. And I met her when she started this organization. She co-founded Pet Community Center, which offers low-cost spay and free spay and neuter uh, preventative veterinary care as well. They have a wellness clinic there. And since 2011, uh, pet homelessness in Nashville has dropped. This is such an amazing thing. I could cry. I, I'm so happy. By 50%, and PCC has served more than 85,000 animals. It's so great. She also has uh, stayed connected to her creative roots as well. She's an actress, and she occasionally appears as an actress on stage and in screen. She's also a visual artist who uses reuse materials to make sustainable art. And this is a really cool thing. She was recently in as an extra on the hit TV show, The Walking Dead. That show scares me. <laughs> Please welcome to the show, Natalie Corwin. Hello, thank you so much. Thanks so much for being here. 
Well, uh, I know you're a really busy person. You have so many things going on and, and now making this beautiful art, you must be working 48 hours a day or something doing all this stuff. You're so good. Oh, well, thank you. It, it's been busy <laughs> since COVID hit, but you know, it's, we're still grateful to be <laughs> where we are. Yeah. Well, I wanted to start by asking you or having you share with us, some of the listeners, Share how the impact of PCC's work has created a paradigm shift for people in Nashville towards spaying and neutering. Sure, yeah. You know, I think in the mid-90s, there were a lot of education campaigns aimed at spaying and neutering pets and pet overpopulation in particular. And in Nashville, that just kind of kept building and building and building. And we had we did have spay neuter in Nashville at some level, but we didn't have, we, we needed about three or four times more spay neuter than we already had. So um, we started our clinic and I think what, what was important about that is that it really helped people to see that it was within reach because it, it, it was really, really expensive um, to just go get it, you know, at full price. And it is expensive right. to do the procedure, but we're able to do it at a lower cost because we can get donations and grants to help cover that cost. Right. And so people thought, oh, you know, the top two barriers to spay and neuter are cost and convenience. So oh. our job was really to try to get over those barriers for folks and make it really easy and really affordable. And so now I think people think it's just part of getting a pet. You know, you get your yeah. pet and you get their shots and you get them spayed and neutered. And it's kind of like a normal thing now. Yeah, it's it's so true. I I, I don't think anymore you have to even discuss it with anybody. It's like, like you know, you, you feed them and water them, and then also you spay and neuter your animal. So I think it's, I think it's, really, uh, it's really great. I know in my neighborhood, in Old Hickory, uh, so many people are convicted to do that, and they're always asking where they can get it done. So that's, that's really great. So tell me about your dog, Sophie. I don't know if Sophie is still with us, but... Um, I guess not because you said you adopted her many years ago, but what was it about her that made you want to begin to really help and save animals? Yeah. So yeah, Sophie, we adopted her in the early 2000s. So she unfortunately is not here anymore, but in, in spirit, definitely. I yeah. think PC is kind of my tribute to her in a lot of ways. And, um, you know, I think she was the first pet that I adopted as an adult. I grew up with pets in our home, but she was the first dog that I adopted. And, um, you know, I think when I thought about her coming from a shelter and around that same time, I started volunteering and like learning more about the animal welfare mm -hmm. world and learning that unfortunately during the early 2000s, most shelter animals that went into a shelter lost their life there and um, they were euthanized because either not enough homes or in some cases there were um, really bad policies in place that were preventing people from going and adopting these awesome animals and it just it broke my heart to think about the wonderful pets that were in the shelter that were just like her that deserved their mm -hmm. their chance as well and you know we spent you know all of our days together and walking in the morning and after work and you know she just really she taught me so much about patience and you know unconditional love right that is the one thing that our pets have for us yeah. that you can't get anywhere else and it's just incredible so she really motivated me to um just to get to work and roll up my sleeves and try to do whatever i could to help other animals that were in need yeah and i remember when we would uh we were trapping cats and and you uh, were, you know, transitioning to PCC and raising funds and everything to open the clinic. Uh, you know how we would bring the animals and there would be a big truck, uh, you know, they would come and pick all the animals up and bring them back to us. I mean, it was quite a commitment for you to be doing so much of that, you know, on your, on your own and, and with a skeleton crew, so to speak, you know, to help you. So it's, it's amazing what you've built PCC into. And, you, and I've attended several of your fundraising events. Uh, I think it's Art for Animals. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we are, actually our 13th annual Art for Animals is coming up on September 20th. Oh. And so in past years, it's been sort of like a gala, a dinner and an auction and really cool artwork from, you know, Tennessee, but all over the country in some cases. So this year we had to get more creative and we're going to do a hybrid event. So on the 20th, which is a Sunday, we'll have a drive-through auction preview 
So you can kind of drive through this location and kind of see all the stuff that we have available and see, oh, would that piece of artwork look great in my home? And then um, go home and watch the virtual event uh, at six o'clock and it'll be about an hour long and you can bid on all sorts of fun stuff and silent auction packages. And of course, all the funds help us continue our work and our mission of spaying and neutering animals in in Nashville. That's, That's a really nice event. Well, that sounds like that could work out pretty good. I hope so. Yeah, I think we've got some fun things planned. So I think it'll be fun as a, you know, COVID special event. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, one of the things that I love so much about PCC is the respect that everybody gives to people and their animals. And talk a little bit about the program. I did some trapping for this program, Pets for Life. Are you guys still doing that program through PCC? Yeah, yeah. Pets for Life is such a great program because I think the one thing that we've learned is that we as the organization can't help animals without a person trusting us and bringing that animal to us. And so serving the person is really just as important to us as serving the pet. And the really interesting thing about Pets for Life, um, it's a national program that we participate in Mm -hmm. and it's designed to be a social justice program. And so now more than ever, we've been doing it for about five years but now more than ever, it's really highlighting why we do this work. You know, the, the same, the injustice and lack of access to um, resources, whether it be health care or livable wages or, what, or pet care, mm-hmm. um, it's part of that, that picture. So what we really try to do, again, is overcome all those obstacles that get in the way. So a lot of our clients, there's no veterinary clinic in their zip code. So we'll give tra- free transportation and we'll subsidize services like spay neuter or vaccinations or flea and tick medicine and just really try to support the pet owners. Cause what we found in the long run is people love their pets and and they'll do whatever they can for them when given the opportunity. It's just that they haven't had those opportunities in the past and they've, you know, kind of been systemically, you know, pushed to the margins and unable to, to access care. So we're happy to be that bridge now. Yeah, one. Well, it's you know, and it's about resources. And and I've met so many wonderful people uh, through my cat trapping adventures. And like you're saying, people you know that really, really care about their animals or the animals they care for. They might be caring for a colony or something like that. And there was one lady uh, that I met through one of the pet for life uh, trappings that was over in North Nashville and she and I text each other sometimes and, and uh, she's a, she's a really wonderful person and, and has lived in that neighborhood for many years with her parents and they passed away. And so she keeps cats there. And so it was really great to get to help her. I, I just, I love doing that. So let's talk a little bit about what is your stay inspired story? What is something that happened to you in your life that just really impacted you? And it could be anything about life or art or acting or. Yeah. Well, we've kind of already talked about Sophie. I think there's been like two sort of defining moments in my adulthood, at least. And Sophie was a big, big one. You know, she Mm -hmm. kind of helped me transition from pursuing music and performing to becoming an animal welfare professional. Right. Uh, But about a year ago, I had another, I had a really like profound experience and it was just like, completely out of the blue. So I was on my way to a July 4th party with some friends and my friends texted me and said, Hey, we're running a little bit late, like 30 minutes late. And I'm like, okay, no problem. So I kind of was just moseying slowly to the party and I had the radio on and I heard this song on the radio and it, it's, um, I love it if we made it by the 1975 and not a lot of people know this band, but, um, they're a British band. And for whatever reason, like, you know, when a song just like draws you in and you yes. just like listen to it over and over and over and you just become like obsessed with it and it was yes. my earworm and, and but even more than that it, that was actually the reason I started painting and doing visual art so I just kind of felt well in in uh, opening pet community center and founding it and doing all that work it was pretty much my singular focus for many years mm. which was great and I felt really fulfilled by that but I'd kind of abandoned some of my creative pursuits in that process just you know there's only so many hours in the day right yeah and so at this point it was just kind of like I felt like the universe or whatever was telling me like you need to get back to being creative and sort of feed your soul and I just like totally I got into this band like a middle school girl like (laughs) 
<laughs> you know, I just, I, I listened to all of their records and it, like, there's just like a real vulnerability and rawness to what they do. And then also like this really like generous spirit in their music too. And so that I just kind of felt like I need to do something creative. And I thought, well, maybe I'll like sing again or go act some more. And then yeah. I sort of had this urge to start painting which I had I mean I haven't done visual art since grade school probably oh my gosh that's so neat just decided to try it out so it was like a really weird just out of the blue like moment that it was really really cool for me that is so great well I love that you brought that up because I think so many times people uh but of course you were turned on by this song and it really inspired you but I think those kinds of things happen to people and they and then they don't follow their heart enough you know, to really follow some kind of passion. You know, to me, it's like when you have something that you're passionate about and it gives you a lot of joy, there's somebody trying to tell you something, you know, maybe you need to go spend a little time on that or, you know, that might be the thing that you carve out in your life for yourself, you know, that you go do. I mean, I write songs all the time and there's people that, you know, they wait their whole life maybe to start writing songs. So, um, I, I can't think of anything creative at this time that I, I mean, maybe other than cooking and then eating the food, but you know, that's something that I like to be adventuresome with, you know, that's, that's a little bit different, you know, I guess than writing a song, obviously, but, and I, I think it's great too, how, um, I think I read on Facebook about you being inspired by that song. Cause I remember that title. So that's really neat. So have you contacted this band and told well, them so that you're painting all these yeah. paintings because of them? A funny story. So then the same friends that I was meeting up with the July 4th party after the party, I was like, you guys have to hear this song. And I like played it for them. And we were all just like, Oh, this is so cool. It was like a funny moment. And so later on, I found out that the band was coming to the States to on tour. And I asked my friends, Hey, do you want to go see them in New Orleans? And they're like, sure, let's go. So we drove down <laughs> to New Orleans and ahead of time. Um, so the band's also very involved in like environmental causes and, um, they had sort of like one of their fans was on Twitter and was saying like, Hey, we should all get together and like plant trees before concerts. And I was like, that's a great idea. Like <laughs> yeah. I think I could do that. So I just contacted a nonprofit in New Orleans that that's all they do is plant trees and said, Hey, would you let some of us fans like before the concert come and plant trees? And they were like, sure. <laughs> so I just like, I contacted the record label and said, Hey, here's what I'm doing. And it sounds crazy, but we just want to say thanks to the band for being so great and like kind of pay tribute to the inspiration that we get from them. And so the lead singer actually tweeted it out. And so we got a bunch of people signed up for it ahead of time and we planted the trees. And then before the show, we got to meet um, the lead singer of the band, which was really, really fun. Oh, so, that's so like, great. like a magical experience. Like I mean, we weren't expecting it to meet, to get to meet the band either. So it was, it was really cool. Oh, that's so cool. So what, what is the process? Like, how do you, you know, how do you choose the materials that you want to use? Are you inspired by the materials or have an inspiration that go find the materials? Um, so when I first started, it was really about, I, I use alcohol ink as my primary medium. And so what it is, is like a, it's ink and isopropyl rubbing alcohol mixed together. Okay. And it's this really cool process where you kind of just drop the ink on to this plastic paper essentially that's not porous so it doesn't absorb the ink and then you put the alcohol on it and you can move the ink around and make these really cool you know shapes and designs and like abstract things and oh. um i had i'm also on the board of directors for a nonprofit called turnip green creative reuse yeah and they are essentially like i kind of liken them to a goodwill for artists and teachers so they okay. accept items that are, they're diverting items from the landfill for creative uses. So I, um, <laughs> sorry, my dog just chased my cat across the room. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so um, I picked up some reused masonite at the shop and the masonite had been donated there by the Metro Public Schools. And I um, kind of took it home and I thought, I think I can paint on this. So I was, uh, you know, I'd noticed that the masonite sometimes had like water stains or holes in it from screws or something. And I would cut those pieces off thinking like, oh, I don't want that to be in my artwork. But then later on, I kind of thought, wouldn't it be cool to leave that stuff in there as part of it and kind of to showcase like, hey, this is a, something that was discarded and now it's a piece of artwork. Oh, and yeah. that's 
kind of part of the process too. And then of course, like I've always had music playing. So I feel like a lot of times I'm sort of channeling the energy of the music and trying yes. to kind of express that in color and shape and form onto whatever my canvas might be that day. That's a really great idea. I've done that kind of thing with music where I listen to something that really inspires me and I write something else, you know, like I'll listen to Beethoven's ninth, let's just for example. And while I'm listening to it, I'm writing something else. I just think it's a really, I mean, as a writer, it feels like a really cool stream of consciousness kind of practice, you know, but that's kind of what you're doing too. You know, you're, you're not writing, you're painting and you're just stream of consciousness kind of thing. I, I love that. So do you create your art at your house or do you, you go to a studio with the, the, um, the organization? I am, I mostly do it at home. So I just kind of set up a little space in the basement and got some good light down there from a window and it, it works That's out really great. That's good. And I, I also had read about you being involved. What's the name of the organization again? Turnip Green? Turnip Green Creative Reuse. Yeah. I, I went and read about that. That's, that's really, that's really cool. I love that. The, I, I kind of have the recycling bug. So I'm, I'm always interested to hear what people are doing with something to reuse it. That's, that's great. So I always ask my guests this, what is your power word? You might have a few. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I think my main power word is probably compassion and it sort of extends to animals and people and the earth and, you know, like with the recycling bug, you know, having yeah. compassion for, the other living things that exist around us and yeah. being respectful of that. And I think it just, that perspective, um, it, it's really powerful, you know, when that's sort of the lens that you see everything through, I think it's, yeah. that's my word. <laughs> I think that's very nice. So if you could finish the sentence for me, what's the number one thing you're the most grateful for today? Oh, definitely the people, family and friends in my life that mean so much. I think, if 2020 has taught me anything, you know, it's not about the stuff that you have or even the places that you go. It's kind of like when all else fails, you've got your family and your friends there yeah. with you. And, and it, you know, it, and it's been enough, you know, like that's, it, it's yeah. not been easy. This year has been really tough for everybody, but yeah. it's been enough. And that, that's really cool. Yes, that's so true. I think that it's, it's really important to think about those simple things. You know, they always talk about the simple things. And if anything, if anything this year has taught everybody, if they're paying attention, what the importance is of simple things and certainly friends and family and, you know, having each other and our own happiness at the end of the day, you know, is what it's all about, you know, because things aren't going to fill that for us. And, and I hope that we're all paying attention to that this year. Well, I want to uh, ask you if you can share with everybody where they can find out information about Pet Community Center, the wonderful organization, and also your art. Sure, yeah. So um, our website at petcommunitycenter.org is where you can get all the information about our services, prices. We offer appointments online, so it's super easy. Um, and then, of course, we're on Instagram and Facebook, too. Yeah, yeah. And then for my artwork, I am at nataliecorwin.com. So I actually just launched that about a week ago, and that's oh. been awesome too. <laughs> oh, I have to go check it out. That's great. And are you, do you have a show coming up with your artwork soon, or did you just have a show? Yeah, I had one in March at Turnip Green Creative Reuse. They have a green gallery um, for reuse artists, and that was a lot of fun. So that was my first one ever, and I was really nervous, but we it was really successful and fun, and hopefully okay. I'll get another one someday soon. Oh, that's that's great. I love it. Well, I'm I'm so grateful that you had time to be here today, Natalie. I think the world of you and and love all the work that you do. You really have impacted my life with your generosity and kindness to people and animals. So I wish you much success in PCC world and in your art world. And thanks so much for being here. Everybody stick around. We're going to be right back.
Hey everybody, welcome to the Nash segment. And I also wanna say thanks to Roxanne Charette for co-writing You're My Shiro with me, which is our Shiro Spotlight song, our theme song. It's fun to have a theme song for a segment. And also she sang on the track with me. We always have fun when we get to work together. So thanks Roxanne. Well, since we had Natalie Corwin as our Shiro Spotlight guest, I thought it would be really great to focus in the Nash segment on Peck Community Center, PCC. And Peck Community Center is really near and dear to my heart. I did a lot of volunteer work for them as a cat trapper. And uh, that was for their trap neuter return program. And it was one of the most fulfilling experiences of mine in Nashville. I met a lot of great people uh, doing that volunteer work and also met all the great people that work at Peck Community Center. Well, if you don't know about Pet Community Center, you need to go and check them out because they do a lot of wonderful work. They really help people and animals, and they teach people how to be better caregivers. They, they help animals. They save a lot of animals' lives. And they're a nonprofit organization, and they're, uh, mainly their focus is uh, high-volume, low-cost spay and neuter programs, and they're a wellness uh, clinic, and they're located, located rather in East Nashville. It's run by highly skilled vets, clinicians, and also nonprofit professionals. And it's also in partnership with Metro Animal Control and other rescue, rescue groups here in Nashville. They have been pivotal in the decline of the euthanasia rate in Davidson County here in Nashville, which has dropped 80% uh, in 2011 to less than 10% in 2019. I don't know what their numbers are yet in 2020, but that's really exciting. And, and I'm proud to say that I was a contributor in that when, when we worked with Natalie in doing ca a cat trapping project here in the area of Nashville that Bill and I live in. So I'm really proud that we contributed to that. Their mission is to end pet homelessness. And so one of my big beliefs and and I know one of their big beliefs is to really be involved in spaying and neutering your cats and dogs because that's one way we, we can really end that, that sad problem. And so I hope if you have a pet and you have not had your pet altered, spayed or neutered, that you're going to put the, put the podcast down, pick up the phone and make an appointment to do that. And if you live in Nashville, you need to contact Pet Community Center because they offer really great services there and they're low cost. So that helps everybody and especially helps your cat or your dog. So I hope you're gonna go check that out. You can find them online and uh, you can contact them or email them and they'll be happy to help you get those services going for your animal. Don't forget to visit, visit musiccity.com. That's the name of the website, visit Music City which is Nashville's tourism and visitors number one site to find out everything that's going on in Nashville. There's virtual visitations there. There's all kinds of cool stuff you can find out. And if you've never been to Nashville before, that should be your first stop because that's where you're going to find out all the cool things to do here. We're going to be right back with Meow Not Bow Wow. Meow Not Bow Wow. Meow Not Bow Wow. Meow. Welcome back to Meow Not Bow Wow, and in my theme today of giving back, I'm going to ask Bill the question, how do you think cats give back? I didn't <laughs> know that they did. Or that they could. I've never thought about it because I didn't think they Well, think did. about it for a second. I mean, what do you think? They, well, they express affection to their owners. Some cats do. Yeah, not, not everyone. Some of our neighbors up the street talk about how their cat only expresses, a, you know, affection when it once fed. Well, that is a thing. <laughs> and I'm surprised Chili isn't back with more comments on that subject. Well, for those of you who own cats, and we joke a lot about cats and how they rule the house and, 
and how they're, you know, really, some people think narcissistic. I just think it's who they are. How does being with a cat benefit you? Well, I did some research. You know, I love my research. Those of us that are spending time with cats, we are benefiting greatly. The American Heart Association claims that you can live longer by owning a cat because it can help you lower your cholesterol. What do you know? My cholesterol should be perfect for all the cats I've helped and lived with. There's also important psychological benefits. Petting a cat can have a calming effect on you and help you relax, lower your stress level. You know, like when you come up, you know, you see these commercials on TV where people come home. And it's like the first thing they do is they drop everything and they run over and they start petting their cat or their dog. That's a good idea. Especially people with uh, kids. Yeah. Cats can also help you fight depression. I think that is really a cool thing because you're petting your cat, the cat's purring, it's making you feel good. There's also been a link between cats and improving communication and social interaction. This is so cool in children with autism. They've done studies saying that cats actually have been able to help autistic children overcome developmental disorders. That's really interesting. So if you don't have a cat and you feel lonely or you want somebody to talk to and you don't have any kids, you're not with somebody, then you need to get a cat and, you know, help your life. Once you get one, you'll want two. Trust me, it's never it's never easy to just have one cat because they're so easy like to love. Chip. Like potato chip. Yeah, exactly. Well, I hope you've enjoyed Kirsty Cast today. It's time for us to go. And before I go, I want to remind you to make sure that you check out all of the ways you can listen and watch Kirsty Cast. You can go to YouTube on Songwriter Girl One channel. You can listen to it on our distributor, Spreaker, or you can get it wherever podcasts are found. And so I hope you're going to go like it, listen, and download. Share it with your friends. Makes me think of a song I was thinking about writing. Right after I get done with this podcast, I think I'm gonna work on that a little bit. Thanks so much for tuning in. We're gonna be back next week with a fabulous guest. I want to thank my sponsor, WarnerWorks.net. My other sponsor, Music Pays My Rent. Don't forget to check out what they do. If you have anything you would like to tell us about this podcast, please email us at info at songwritergirl.com. If you'd like to be a guest on the podcast, I'd love to hear from you. If you'd like to work with me, email me. Hope you're going to have a great week. And whatever you do, stay inspired. See you next time. You've been listening to Kirsty Cast.